What up, what up? What's good, everybody? My guy Dan in the building. Sir, yes, sir. Legendary. There we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's up? Not much, man. I appreciate you, man, for taking the time out, man. Such oh, a yeah, legendary, man. legendary person, legendary human being. You know what I'm saying? Your work ethic speaks for itself. You know, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay fifty dollars to hype me up like that. I appreciate it. Hey, man, they don't call me the DJ Funk Master Flex for nothing. <laughs> you, gotta the, you got the bomb button. I, I got the bomb button. I got a bomb button. You got too. bombs and you got the Jamaican horns. You got all that stuff. I got all that, bro. All right. I appreciate you, though. I really do. No, nah, hell yeah. No, nah, I'm glad. To, happy to talk, man. It's one of these things that, like, it's a silver lining for this nonsense going on in the world to actually be able to connect with some people. So that's how I look at it, you know? Definitely, definitely. Because it's crazy because, like, if the season's going on right now, I'm so busy with, with the playoffs and all that stuff going out. We don't get the chance to really, you know what I'm saying? And then you would probably have a million and 20 million, you know, projects going and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, but over the time, though, we reached out and stuff like that. And we always connected. So I felt like, it was always right, you know, the time was right, so we had to make it happen. Yeah, not for sure. And, like, how are you doing? Like, how are you hanging in with all this stuff? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm still in Oklahoma City um, trying to figure out what they're going to do with the season. Um, right. Luckily, luckily, I got my sister out here with me. My mom was trying to get out here, but they shut down Boston. So it's been, it's been challenging, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, social distancing, got to just stay safe and, and, and continue to quarantine. And, uh, you know, just be disciplined. You know what I'm saying? This is a time where it's going to test us, you know? So right. we just got to be disciplined and, and do what we're going to do, you know? Right. And, you know, and it's just it's just wild to go out. Like, I mean, because sometimes you just have to go out. But just, like, use discretion. It ain't that hard. Like, throw a mask on. Stay away. I yeah. don't know. It's, it's wild. But, I mean, not everyone's wired the same. And I've accepted that, sadly. And, yeah. you know, you just kind of do what you can do to protect yourself and your family. And, you know, hopefully – it all works out in the end. But, you know, in yeah. terms of the season, you know, I've heard some crazy ideas they've been throwing around, you know, like starting back in, in June or going to Disney World or whatever yeah. else for the season. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be exciting. You know, even if it's, you know, no crowds, I think just the fact that, you know, we get excited watching the draft or like watching, you know, the last dance, you know, we get hyped about that. Like it's the freaking World Series yeah. or the finals. So it's like, it's good. You know, it's good that people are giving enough, enough outlets and contents to keep us not losing our minds <laughs> collectively. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. You know, this is the best time to polish up on your skills and, and get that content out there and, and stuff like that. Because as soon as the world just starts going back to normal, you know, you're going to wish you had these these moments to, to brush up on your skills and your tools, you know? So yeah. this, is, this, this gives me a platform to still be able to be in interview mode and still be able to, you know, get the fun stuff out that I really want to do on a nightly basis. And sometimes, you know, I can get the fun questions out, but then it's like majority of the time it's like I got to ask about the game and just, you know, keep it in the game pocket. But of course. at the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, you know, as long as we wake up and we're still doing what we want to do and, and, you know, we're still breathing and, and everybody, your family and everybody's good, that's all that matters to me. It's a you blessing because so. there's so many people that can't say the same thing. So that's how I look at it. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. You know, so I, I definitely appreciate you for, for taking the time out and, uh, we going we gonna to jump into it, man. Yes, sir. Hey, before let's we let's do go. That, before, we, before we do that, though, how, how, how's the wife? How, how's your family? You know what I'm saying? She's we talked about mine. You know, the, the thing that's good is, you know, we, we knew what we were getting ourselves into before we got married. We knew if we okay. could stand each other in close proximity, and we're good, man. You know, I think in the beginning, it was kind of like a learning, because, you know, I used, my studio was outside the house. So, yeah. you know, it took a little bit to, like, Damn, I really wish you could go to the studio a little bit. <laughs> but but now we're good. Like I brought a lot of this stuff home, so a lot of the projects don't stop. And, you know, some opportunities have, you know, shown themselves due to the situation that we're in that I yeah. normally probably wouldn't have seen. So it's a uh, like I said, it's I'm always looking at the glass half full because there's no sense focusing on the bad stuff because what's the point? No one wants to hear you bitch. <laughs> I mean nah, nah, I feel I feel you on that one. I definitely yeah. feel you. So that's good though. At least y'all yes. are maintaining, y'all are y'all are doing what you're doing, and you're still able to, you know, still be able to live. You know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing. You know, it's like yeah. so many people feel like they're trapped inside. It's like you're only trapped in if you don't got other things to do, or if you're not thinking about, you know, that entrepreneurship. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, us us uh, footwear artists and artists in general, we're, we we were bred for this kind of quarantine life, like yeah. being isolated and not talking to people. So we're good, man. It's it's uh, it is what it is. <laughs> we're making it work. 
Definitely, definitely. Well, we can jump into it now. Um, damn man, how'd you get how did you get into customizing? Talk about how that started and also are you a true sneak obviously you're a true sneak I see behind you, but yeah, I got we'll I, have about the, that. I have the default shoebox background. You know, <laughs> I, I did my best. I don't know if you saw maybe like two weeks ago I, I kind of straightened out the boxes because they were doing the gangster lean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like a really bad game of Tetris behind me and in front of me. <laughs> I would I would put the to see what's going on in the front where all my Nike stuff is. It looks like yeah, yeah. It would give some people anxiety looking at it. So and, and I actually <laughs> attempted, but yeah. I mean, I've always been in the shoes. You know, growing up, uh, I grew up in a trailer park. You know, I was one of those kids that like we weren't broke, but we didn't have a lot of money. But you know, okay. I was the person that you know wanted to fit in, and we didn't have the 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 money to go spend it on clothes. And back then it was, you know, this is back in the early eighties. So it wasn't like yeah. you're out there buying off white and buying all the designer crap like yeah, you are yeah. now. But back then, you know, my mom would take me shopping for clothes, you know, like the mall, like JC Penny and Sears, you know, I was always a chubby kid. So I was shopping, <laughs> shopping in the Husky section. And, yeah. um, and for the shoes, I mean, I, at the time when I, you know, when I was younger, I didn't know any better. You know, I was wearing the pay less and the voids and the Spaldings and I didn't know any better. But then, yeah. you know, I think everyone's story usually starts with a pair of Nikes. You know, people you see you see in Jordan, you see in you know Georgetown, you see in you know all this you know those times in basketball. Yeah, Nikes were it. You know, then you got into Reeboks, and you know like the Olympics with Dan and Dave, like that whole promo thing. You know, D Brown Definitely. and all that. So yeah. like, I always knew that sneakers were a, a way I could kind of feel like I was part of something or whatever. Even early, I mean, I think. Yeah. You know, even, you know, now you, you see how people buy shoes to feel like they're part of this culture, part of this, you know, yeah. community. And it started yeah. way earlier. Just the fact is we didn't have social media to clown people. You know, you're just on the yeah, playground yeah. getting clowned on your shoes. So <laughs> That's um, true. the first pair of shoes that I, I ever bought my own money were the Jordan 5s, black and silvers, back in 1990. At the time, okay. there was, to the young folks watching, there was no uh, sneaker news or complex or anything to tell you where things came out. There wasn't even East Bay magazine when I start when I was young. You went to oh, the wow. damn mall. You went to Full Locker, and it looked you, you had the the green outer turf and the old scoreboard. And you walk in, and whatever was there was there. And you know, wow. I remember when I say that I was shoveling driveways and mowing lawns to get one hundred and nineteen dollars for the Jordans. Yeah, you know, that's all it was. There was no Jordan Five, Jordan Four. It was the it was the Air Jordan. That's that was it. it was. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So when I went to the mall thinking I was going to get the Fours because that was the last pair I had seen kids wearing went there yeah. and the five was there so i'm like that's there jordan i'm getting it and i wore those things in the ground you know <laughs> I, you know if you know how the five is yeah the, it has the clear part and then the, the rubber part that's you know kind of can flop and open up i yep. was like you know the, it was, the, the soles were talking and i was still wearing them because i could mom was like you got one pair of shoes for school that's, that's it, it. You know, yeah, don't that's wear it. Play. Yep. you had your play pair you had your school pair and then you know, then it did kind of the lines got blurred, and that play pair became the riding bikes pair and jumping <laughs> and you know whatever. You know, and then yeah, then you fast forward to, you know, God, twenty five years later, and I'm lucky enough to to have my own money and get all the shoes that I couldn't get when I was a kid. You know, and now yeah. when they retro them, they made the Jordan Five in freaking every color underneath the sun. So yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, those. yeah. And yeah. then, you know, it just kind of snowballs and it turns into one of these situations. And here we are, you know, um, <laughs> that's the, the sneaker love affair story. Very gotcha. condensed. Definitely. As for the customization part, while I was playing sports as a little kid, you know, Little League, basketball, whatever it was, mm -hmm. um, I was always into art. My grandma was an art teacher. Um, but I was self-taught. I would stay okay. at her house um, during the summers. My mom was working. I, she had my grandma had a studio in the back where she used to do like, um, you know, you know, like the fl fake flower, um, things like the old, old ladies do, but you go to the ladies at Michael's will buy the, okay, yeah, like the flower pot type yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 like the fake arrangements. Yeah. She had a studio back there, but there was also all these things where you could draw. So I was always drawing in the back. I'd be blasting okay. music. I, I made this ghetto stereo system that was blasting music. <laughs> Come on, this is probably like 1991, 92. Yeah. And I was just in the back drawing either. It was like cartoons, like drawing Garfield or Calvin and Hobbes, or I was drawing sneakers. Like I was like just making my own designs and whatever, and I'd be sticking them on my grandma's fridge. So by the time the summer was done, her whole her whole thing was covered with drawings of sneakers. So that was okay. always a thing. I always had an, a 
a love affair with shoes. And then, um, have you heard the story about how I played college sports and stuff? I don't want to regurgitate all everything. No, no, no. I did. I did. Okay. I did. So, um, when I found out I was done, I couldn't play baseball anymore, you know, with the Rotera cup and all that stuff. Yeah. Luckily I had art. I had talent. So I had something to fall back on. But when I got out of college, my brother gave me a job working at a school for autism where I was just, it was basically working with kids ages from seven to 18 that had all, all different diagnoses of the autism spectrum could be, you know, Asperger syndrome, the full blown, like non verbal, whatever. So I would work the night shift. And where I saw, I saw someone that had done art on sneakers and okay. I'm always been the competitive type. You know, I played sports all my life. Yeah. And like I said, like, it don't matter. I, I'm competitive. At, I'm uncompetitive about, about customizing shoes. Even though I'm, I'm a course. nice guy, I want to be everybody's ass. I mean, that's just how of I am. Of course, of course. It's, hey, yeah, it's, it's, if, hey, you, if, you're, if you're, you're not competitive, you're a damn liar. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, wants to so, be the best. Of course. You know, it's like everyone rappers would be like, they say you're the best rapper. Yeah. I'm not a rapper, but I paint <laughs> shoes. So, um, yeah, so I, I started painting shoes over while the kids were sleeping on the overnight shifts. And I was just painting and there was no social media. There was no nothing. It was just me learning how to do what I do. Yeah. Um, at the time, all there was was like Nike Talk and the ISS and Uptowns, like all those kind of sneaker forums and whatever. And I was just kind of honing my craft and I learned that other guys were doing what I was doing. So we had like a little, little uh, small brotherhood of people that we would bounce ideas off of and techniques. Excuse me. And we would learn about Angelus paint, which is what everybody uses for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That was like a kept secret way back when. Like when I started, this is where, this is where the old man stories come in. <laughs> yeah. When I started, um, they came in little glass bottles. So you could only get at like these little, little like – fashion shops you had to order them special you could there okay. angels wasn't selling paint like that you had to go to a specialty shop to find them gotcha. and i would just you just stockpile them but anyway we would bounce ideas and often learn techniques on how to properly prep shoes paint shoes whatever and you know yeah. that's where the inner competition happened because you know on those those sneaker forms you wanted to be on the top of that thread because if, of if course. that was like that was like you know being on the featured page now on instagram like definitely definitely put, but it was just, you know, I just want to get the respect of the people that were doing what you were doing at the time. You know, then, mm -hmm. then you fast forward and when social media happened <laughs> and then it, yeah. then it just kind of blew up. And, you know, there was a lot more other things that I won't bore you because I know you got mad questions for me, which I'm, yeah. I'm happy to answer. But um, it blew up in the social media age it was just something that opened up um, what we do that was such a small thing that was really frowned upon when we started. You know, we didn't, yeah. you, it was sacrilegious to paint Jordans. You had to, you were yeah, yeah. painting Air Force Ones or Dunks, and that was it. Yeah. And, or like Air Maxes or whatever. But Jordans, like, since you didn't want to get confused with fake sneakers, because at the time you yeah. saw the, the, the fake colorways and the crazy ones you'd get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you didn't want to be confused with that. So I didn't touch Jordans. And, you know, then as I got better and better and felt comfortable to actually charge money for what I was doing, that's when it became a little more of a hustle as opposed to just doing it for fun. And keep in mind, you know, I was still doing regular jobs and whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. So my question is, do you have any custom sneakers? I do, I do. I got a couple. I don't have any from you. That's the problem. What's we got. We'll work on that. You know? I know you got, I got Andrew. Andrew hooked you I up got, one. Andrew hooked me up. Andrew's uh, a homie. I, he's yeah. a Packer fan. So, but I'm not gonna talk crazy about Andrew. <laughs> but I got I got to get one from you. Definitely. I, I got some some big stuff coming up. So I need to go to you. I might have to go to the OG for this one. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hold you to that. As, no, and, no, I'm, and, I'm, I'm telling you right and, on here. And, and I'm looking, the pe all the people on here hear, hear that. So he will have something for me. I definitely do. I definitely do. Um, yeah, but what I was going to say was back then, um, the funny part, and I probably never I probably never told anybody this. My first pair, I think the only person that knows is Matt. My first pair of, um, of, of Jordans that I got with my own money was a red, white, and blue Jordan 12 from Nice Kicks. When they were selling when all nice crazy kicks colors. was nice kicks. When, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Bro. So that was my first pair. I wore those to school. And everybody was like, yo, those are crazy. When are these coming out? I was like, yo, y'all don't know yet. They're coming. I and, got the plug. I got the yeah, yeah. I got <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and sure enough, boy. Oh man, yeah. them things broke. Them things broke in like probably like a month and a half. Yeah. I remember I remember in college I got a pair a pair of fake babes 
and I got I got beat on. They're like black and gray patent leather ones. And the thing was like, you order them and you order a size twelve, and it looks like a size ten when it comes in. Yeah. And, you know, you try to squeeze it in, and like you know, uh, it, dark times, dark times. Definitely, definitely. Day. But yeah, definitely. Now you're right, but yeah, yeah, we <laughs> we 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 got over that hurdle, so we're good now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good now. Definitely. Um, obviously, you've got some legendary. See, homeboy already knows where I'm coming at. Um, but you got some legendary um, customs. What would you say is your top five customs and why? I mean, you got so many, but what are the ones that meant the most yeah. to you, if you, can, if you could put them there? It's it's hard. I mean, I think it's a cop-out to be like, oh, everyone's my favorite pair, because that's, yeah. that's not true. But, like, when you're doing it, you're obviously very emotionally invested in what you're doing because you want to put out the best work. Definitely. Um, I, I think majority of people that are probably following your page know about the Iron Man LeBron. That, that of course, LeBron. and that, that was kind of the pair that for the moment kind of put me into the mainstream and you know a co-sign from LeBron even back then in 2013 where you know his reach was crazy back then it's obviously blown up to astronomical yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. dude has schools and is a philanthropist and yeah you yeah. know when, when I when I was dealing with LeBron LeBron was just still trying to have a stylist and and be flying stuff <laughs> but he, he wasn't you know he was still in the short term stuff so it'd be you. really it'd be really dope to reconnect with him. Um, uh, he was following me, and then when he wanted a zero dark thirty years ago, when he followed everybody, he, I yeah. he don't follow me anymore. So we, we got I got to hit up Mav or Ernie and and uh, try and reconnect on that one. I might but, um, I might see what we can do. I, I yeah. might see what we can do on that. Definitely, because I mean, I like I, like I said, like every once in a while, you know, we'll talk back and forth. But yeah, like, dude's so freaking yeah, busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not yeah, gonna sit there definitely. and be like, Yo, son, I got this crazy. I, I, yeah, I yeah. don't want to hear that. <laughs> so um other ones yeah um i was a big fan of the assassin pair that i did with jbf just be as okay. a simpsons fan yeah that was like a folklore dream and like we've talked about doing that shoot for years and finally when i was out in cleveland for the all-star game for mlb i went to a studio i'm like yo we're doing this shoe i held him down i was like we're finally doing this shoe i don't care there's no that's what's up yeah so we got it done and, and they're dope and i've worn them a couple of times and you know, it's usually one of those, what are, what are those moments? Because no one knows what the yeah. hell they are. But then people that get it are like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, other favorite customs. If, if I, I'd probably have to go into some of, some of my cleats, too. You know, a lot of the stuff we did yeah. were things that. Oh, man. Like, them, Popeyes ones, them Popeyes ones caught my attention, like, right off the bat. Yo, I, <laughs> that, that was something. Just because I, I remember that was, that was a whole, you know, obviously you're, you're dealing with brands and things like that. Yeah. So I mean, in terms of spotlight and things, that was a cool moment. And, and that was a cool yeah. moment. Yeah. You know, and I was at the, I was I remember I was sitting on the bench during pregame, and you know, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I can't believe you're wearing Popeye's cleats right now. He's just like, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it's yeah, about. We we all benefited off of that, and 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 it was supposed to be we were supposed to announce that the chicken sandwich was coming back with those cleats on that day, because it was the oh, day that, that it came crazy. back. But the thing was, um. They couldn't. They they wanted to give some kind of um, build up because it was on Sunday. So yeah, they let everybody know it was coming back on 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 Friday. They let him know. Then he wore them on Sunday. But it still worked out because it's still he wore them the day that the chicken sandwich came back. And I yeah. remember I, I went to Popeyes the next morning before I called my flight back home to make sure I got my sandwich. But yeah, <laughs> um, I think for Diggs, as a Vikings fan, the miracle pair, the fu the future. Dirty spray yeah. pair was was dope again for the moment. I don't think for the artistic part of it. I mean, if you're a future fan, you're you're marking out on them. Of course, but, of course. You know, but you know, I, futures and acquired taste. I don't know. Like he's cool. I'm. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I'm a I'm a 41 year old white guy from Connecticut. <laughs> I don't really get to get down with the codeine and all that stuff. But yeah. like he, he's a vibe though. I mean, don't get me wrong. Definitely. But um, I think I think for the moment that was dope. It's cool that they're in the Hall of Fame. I think that's awesome. That so is I awesome. Have two pairs. I have two pairs in the Hall of Fame now. I have a pair of his, the Diggs pairs there, and then uh, Xavier Rhodes has a pair that was in there too because he ran back the furthest um, pick six going back. Oh, wow. It was, like okay. it was like 106 yards. He caught it from the end zone and ran it back in those cleats. Oh, wow. So, that's crazy. So if you want to make a moment and go to the Hall of Fame, you hit up Mosh. Yeah, yeah. Facts, <laughs> facts, facts. Yeah. yeah. We, we, got, we, got, we have nothing but facts here. Um, that's all facts right there. And then artistic wise, I think the Stone Cold pair for Diggs against Dallas was dope, and yeah. you know the fact that that Stone Cold followed me on Twitter <laughs> that night 
and we started That's talking cool. as you know, obviously as a, as a fan of both the things. The that thing, I was bugging out, so definitely, that was definitely. pretty dope. You know, and now and now you know Steph's brothers in Dallas, which is uh, pretty cool. So we got plenty of blue and silver paint for uh, for little little bro too. So I'm, okay. I'm excited for whenever the season gets cracked and we can start going. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to to what you put on the court. Definitely, you know. And, yeah. and Seth got some. Seth got some heat that you know he he said he said he was coming with it. So, you of know, course, I, I'm putting two and two together now. Now it now it makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. But not honestly, like just having a, a pair of cleats shoes in the Hall of Fame for any Hall of Fame in general. You know what I'm saying? I know that's a a, a high honor and, and, and a humbling experience for you. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. So I'm gonna tell definitely. my kids if I ever have them. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Hey, your, your wife, your wife's talking about your beard. So yeah, yeah. Ma, shave your beard. I already shaved my beard. <laughs> so always, always giving me shit. Yeah, hey, it is what it is. It's all that's love. A, that's a white thing. Hey, Keep she's in, in here though. She's supporting. She's in here. Oh, she's always supporting. <laughs> I need to get a ride to die like that, man. When I was in Connecticut for school, I didn't find any, so I got to go back maybe, and we'll make gotcha. it happen. Where, you know what I'm now, saying? now for for you being from from OKC, what are you doing in Connecticut? What are you doing? What are you doing? See, see, you, I'm from Boston. Oh, shit. that's what okay. a lot of people a lot of people don't know that I'm from New England. So, see, I, I should I should deeper question. Okay, what's up? No, I said I should be deeper questioning, so I know <laughs> this about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to I went to I I'm born and raised in Boston, covered the Celtics, went to school in Connecticut. Um, I went to I went to um Briarwood. Briarwood um college. It's okay. in um it was in Bristol. Right right down the street from so um, it's up, ESPN. It's up there. Yeah, it's up right there. down the street from ESPN and um yeah. and um it's in the up, boonies. What's the, what's the um the theme park again? Oh, oh yeah, I know the, I know Lake Compound, Lake Compound. Yep, yep. Lake I, Compound. I've never been there, but yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I was right over there and then okay. um and then I ended up taking some classes at UConn and stuff like that. So I, I was in Connecticut for a long time. I was all over the place, Hartford, you know, Danbury. It didn't matter. I was, you know, Bridgeport, Bridgewater. I mean, not Bri women. Bridge, was Bridgeport. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was all over the place. So yeah. I so you. I got New England traits. I'm, I'm from that. I'm from that area. I got Definitely. you. It's always it's always funny. Like whenever you talk to a rap, they're like, "Yeah, I got family in New Haven." I'm like, yeah, of yeah, course yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I had that. So then, um, and then I came out to OKC, um, just because. You know, it was one of those where Boston got rid of the big three, and mm -hmm. you know times are changing. So it was like I had to make a change myself. So I got you. You got to evolve. So you that, can't stay side, and I get it. That's exactly what it was. So that's when I ended up coming out to OKC. So nice. yeah, so that's what it was. But uh, but enough about me. We're back to you. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what's um your top five sneakers all time? If you can give me a top five, even if they just mean something to you, or just your top five that you really rock with. Yeah, I mean the black and silver fives are my number one just because of the story and how it got me started in the in the okay. shoe addiction of what I got going. Um, I'm not gonna say Jordan ones because I feel like they've been kind of. I like Jordan ones, but they're not the most. Everybody puts it in their top. Yeah, five, and, and they're dope as hell, and they're easy to wear, and they're great. Like I I, I generally wear my Nigel Sylvester's like all the time because they're already beat, so they're great yeah. to hang in. And you know whatever you do to them, you're good. Um, yeah. I'll still always rock Ultra Boost. I'm an Ultra Boost guy till I die. You know, they're they're okay. perfect. For, they're great for the airport. You know, taking them on and off, going through security. You know, being comfortable. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go a little diverse. I mean, okay. New, new balance. I I would still go with New Balances. I think I think you know, nine seventy sevens, nine nine zeros, like all those are great. Whether it's you know from the UK ones or the ones here, they're just made really well. You know, and I okay. And it helps that I have a relationship with those guys too. So it never yeah. hurts. Um, yeah, yeah. You got then, that sick I, package too. What's you got that? that sick um that big league package was tough. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's crazy. And, and, and I be, there was I so be watching. Hard. I be watching. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and and the best part was uh my wife was most excited about the actual gum more than anything else. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, you know, it brings you back to your childhood. I think anything that kind of brings you back to that is great. Definitely. Um, and then I would say for another pair, I would probably. I mean. I'm an Air Max One guy. I, I I love doing those. I like the fact that I don't know if you saw um the YouTube episode that I dropped today. I did I did the a Beast Bowl Air Max One with okay, Nike. Okay, have to check and that out. You go you go back, you see the behind the scenes. But I've had, for a couple of anniversaries, um you know it's not it's not cheap. You know it's it's a thousand dollars to get a pair made. But you go to the actual Nike lab down down in yeah. New York, 
and you pretty much custom you you tailor every part of the shoe, whether it's stitching, just like the aglets, the soles. Oh, we, wow. You change colors of soles, the air bubbles. Like, and the thing is, you're not. It's not like Nike ID. Like you're pulling out swatches of materials, and you okay. can bring in materials and replace things and whatever. And gotcha. yeah, you know, they give you about two hours there to do it. You know, they give you food. They give you drink. You want to drink beer while you're doing it. They give you beer. Like that's dope. Whatever. That's dope. I mean, you're paying a thousand dollars. They better want to dine you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's an awesome experience, and um, it's unfortunate because when we we did it, we made it as like a, like just like some footage to kind of document it. But like, yeah, it was from a year ago, so I wasn't doing a YouTube channel, so we didn't really do like a real in depth kind of deal. So okay. we, we definitely want to go back and do uh do do another one and okay, get a little cool. more in depth for the people because it it seems like it's been pretty well received, and I can kind of show people more of you know how to do that stuff. That's dope. That's definitely dope. We spoke on it a little earlier, obviously, the Iron Man, LeBron 10. But uh, if you could describe that moment in three words, what would the three words be? Custom game changer. Because I like that. at, the, at I that like time, that. customs weren't popping like that. And, I, you know, he wasn't the first person to wear customs on court. I'm not going to say that. Yeah. However, he did open up the eyes to a lot of people to co-sign what we were doing. And yeah. this is before – the restrictions came off and you can do whatever and it's a free for all now and i yeah. think with the custom sneakers being allowed on the court it unveiled a lot of really awesome art and a lot a lot of really crappy art i've yeah, seen a yeah, lot yeah. of really bad customs and a lot of really good ones and i applaud everybody who has you know done it and grinded you know i think yeah. uh, i think this goes back to the social media that's such a great tool because i think a lot of these aspiring artists and young guys are hungry and i respect yeah. it and they, they motivate me you know, these, this good. old dog knows that I have to, I have to keep up with these young bucks, and they're and they're they don't sleep. <laughs> they don't. So, they don't, man. They no. don't. And I was that it's way just, too. Like yeah, when, when I when I did um the LeBron pair, I mean, I I was still living with my mom back then, and I was in her basement, and I remember I was working around the clock all the time, banging out orders, oh, hanging wow. on my bed, okay. and I'm sure a lot of the new customizers could probably say the same story. Be like. I'm at home just grinding, you know, doing my hustle and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And all I can say is to the young guys, you know, expect to mess up. You're going to because you're not perfect. And, yeah. you know, if, if you're if you're strong enough to kind of push through and be able to learn and take constructive criticism, which I had a problem taking sometimes, mostly yeah. from my wife, <laughs> <laughs> um, the better off you'll be. You know, she's going to say right now when we're done talking, she's like, see, I told you you should listen to me. So, but she, but she's great. I think you got to have, you do got to have people that are just going to kind of check you or give you things to make yeah. you better as opposed to saying everything's dope. Cause not everything's dope. You know, I remember she said yeah, that yeah. The, pair, the pair I did for Dwayne Wade years ago, she's like, I didn't really like the artwork you did. She didn't tell me that until like maybe like two weeks ago. <laughs> but I was like, damn, you didn't like but still, that. Hey, you know, but still you need somebody that's going to, so there's so many yes men in every single industry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you, you know drop, what? You, you can drop something tomorrow that's just like you could just splatter some paint on something tomorrow, and they'll be like, "Yo, that is the craziest." You right. know what I'm saying? Like, well, calm down. Well, the yes men are saying yes because they're afraid they're gonna mess up their own situation with that person. So, yeah. You know, and and that I mean, that they're always gonna have those type of people, but you just have to kind of be aware that's how they are, and you know, take it for what it is. Don't don't yeah. really take their opinion too much into account. I guess. Yeah. I want the no. I want the no people in my. You know what I'm saying. I want the people that are just like, nah, man, that's just trash, man. You could have oh, yeah. did, you did mean, this, or you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, over the years, like my my circle, I could probably count on my hand, like same, how many same. close people are in there. Yeah, you know, I have a million acquaintances and a lot of work acquaintances, and you know, some people I call friends, yeah. but you know, for the most part, I mean, it's the ones that are talking to Dan and are talking about watching Vanderpump Rules and not talking about shoes. Yeah. Yeah, see, and that's yeah, that's how I feel too. I yeah. feel the same way. It's just like it's just like on my Facebook, like I don't take requests from people that are sneaker people, or if they don't really know me. Like I need someone where people know me for like like the guy I went to high school with. Yeah, like, that's a whole other world. Like I I like to have a little bit of a line between. Not that I'm I'm different, you know, as Mosh or <laughs> whatever, yeah. but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and that's the same with me with Travis and then sneaker reporters. You know, it mm -hmm. goes the same way. You know what I'm saying? I try to keep everything private on Facebook and, and live my life. And then Instagram is where I kind of have my fun with the sneaker reporter stuff and, right. and do whatever. Same thing for the for NBA reporters. On Twitter, I'm more professional than I am on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Because oh, yeah. I know that's, that's, that's where I know everybody's at. So it's, it's a yeah. lot more different. So 
definitely have to, you know, you gotta you gotta know definitely the differences and and pick and choose your battles with people too. You know what I'm of saying? And, of course. And, and yeah, it's it's all about having that 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 nip tuck type of type of environment with people that you know are gonna actually be there for you. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. they're there for Dan, they're not there for Mox. You know what I'm saying? So right. And then you should, and you also understand you can only control the, how you react to things and your actions. You can't control other people do. And yeah, I, exactly. I think as long as, you know, you get those people that you can trust and know they're not going to embarrass you in public, you're good. And then those yeah. are the ones you can bring to the events and do those things. But definitely, definitely, definitely. I got I got my people that are like, hey, man, that interview, man, I heard you slip up on, on a word or whatever. I got people that are always coming you after those. me, you know. They need That's to keep you in line, man. Stuff. Yeah, they got to keep you in line. Definitely. Yeah. But um, what NBA players have you been working with? And what's what's one player that you haven't worked with that you're like, man, I really want to work with this person? It sucks because before the um the league shut down, I was supposed to be doing some stuff with Anthony Davis, and oh, I've nice. been doing. I, I well, I was I uh, I was cool at AD a couple for a couple of years. I did a pair of custom mags for him years ago. Okay, and he's a Packer fan too, so we, yeah, we don't get along. Yeah, couple, yeah. Couple of times, a couple of months out of the year, we don't get along. Yeah. But um, it really he made me he had me make a pair of Packers sixes, and it really hurt me, hurt my soul to make them actually. But you know, you got you got to do what you got to do to maintain that that relationship. But yeah, 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 you got to. <laughs> um, let's see. The thing is with the NBA, I haven't really done so much NBA lately because for the most part, a lot of the, a lot of the guys either want free customs, which is you know it is what it is. But I do yeah. have a good relationship with um with Puma. So I was doing stuff with Kuzma. I was doing stuff with um, their whole roster. I'm trying to go down the line, you know, Knox. And, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all them. So, like, anytime they would have, like, special makeups for, like, you know, International Women's Day, I did pairs for everybody. Like, Danny Green. Like, I did Danny Green shoes for um, yeah. for the parade when they won in Toronto. Okay. You know, and, then, and then we did some stuff. And we were going to do some stuff for Danny, too, before all this stuff happened. So it kind of seems like I'm, I'm starting to work on the Lakers roster again. So, nah. so maybe we're we're good, and then like not even really meaning to, it's gonna get back to number number two three. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, we'll it's see. gonna happen. Yeah, gonna happen. and I was um I, I talked to Steph Curry when he was kind of getting back into things, and you know we we were talking, but again, you know with this situation, it's like they're they're just itching to get back and playing. They're not worrying about custom shoes right now. So of course, yeah, of course. So I, more than likely, you know, if something's gonna happen, we'll we'll focus on next season. You know. Praise God that everything works out. And we're we're doing yeah. that. So, Definitely. so yeah. And then a couple of a couple of rookies um, that I met when they initially did the um, when, right after they got drafted, I started talking to a bunch of the young guys and kind of letting them know who I was and showing them my work. So I mean, it, it'll be one of those things where I got to put lay down the groundwork and build some relationships. And you know, the yeah. guys that get down with it, awesome. But there is so many other guys that have their relationships, like. You know, Serato works with Zion. So, like, yeah. I remember when I was talking to Zion, I'm like, I know that that's your boy, but, yeah, you know, whatever. I'm like, so how long is it going to take for Jordan to let you wear customs again? And he was like, I don't know. I got to wear, you know, the PEs for now and whatever. Yeah. So, and shout out to Kelsey up at, at Jordan now because. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you get Kelsey's custom, looking it up. You get a customizer, and you can tell when you get a customizer doing those themes. So, you know, she's a monster, you know. Yeah, she is. I remember when she was still painting vans and playing field hockey at Penn State. And, you know, man. to kind of see what she's doing. And then my man Trevor, who was a customizer too, he's doing the cleated footwear for the football and, and for the baseball and all that. Yeah. And it's just cool to see people that I like doing stuff. And I got it's you. awesome. It's good. But yeah. it's good to show that, like, us people that do what we do are finally getting the respect from those brands because – we used to kind of get shitted on a little bit, you know, just in, a little in bit. Terms they, of... But they saw you. They saw you guys as competition. You know what I'm saying? That's why. Oh yeah, and they still do to an extent. I mean, yeah. but I, th I think it's been easier to. I think it's easier for the people that kind of pull the strings to agree. But the designers, we're, they're artists. They're creators just like us. You know, we're very yeah. proud of our work. You don't want some guy that's just painting on shoes to be like, "Who's this guy? <laughs> I'm, I'm here definitely. doing this, and this guy's doing this." So, you know. Well, us us creatives are very sensitive people, and and I know that because I get the same way. You. you know, like I said, I'm competitive, and I and I'll, I'll punch a little kid in the face to win a game of bad man. <laughs> I, I say it all the time. That that's a good way to get an idea of how I am and how I roll. I got you. No, I got you. But so I'm humble. The, no, no, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you <laughs> humble. You know, I can tell you humble. So you're good. But um, I was gonna say, so so who's 
name a couple of players that you do want to work with. I, I know you said Zion or whatever like that, but some other players that, you know, in the NBA that you in definitely NBA, want to. Yeah. Um, I want to do something for, for Derrick Rose. That was something I wanted to do. I want to do something for okay. Dame. I've done stuff for Dame, but I want to get back to doing stuff for him. Um, okay. He he uh he was a big fan of stuff I was doing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I've done stuff. I gotta think. I'm on the spot, and it's funny because you told me what you were gonna ask me. So I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm I'm trying to think. Um, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, oh Kemba too. I, I've uh, we've had conversations, so kind of keeping it in Boston okay. a little bit. So yeah. like, hopefully, hopefully at some point, you know, like I said, it's it's one of those things that like I'm not really focused on headhunting right now, but you know, I got you. next season I'll put the legwork okay. in and start start sending out Christmas cards, <laughs> let, let people know. Hey, you know, I'm with you. hey, if you need a little alley oop, man, I can I can definitely help out a little bit. Okay, hey, yeah. like, like you said, you you know you're getting a pair of shoes. Hey, 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 I, I can help out a little bit. I said it, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Obviously, we know you're a diehard Vikings fan. Um, yes, sir. Uh, you're a Mets fan too, right? Um, I, I, I'm actually a White Sox fan. Okay, I was so a, White Sox. I, the, people saw the saw the logo look like the Mets logo because I, I saw the yeah yeah yeah. yeah I'm originally I saw that. from New York. My mom's a Mets fan, and okay, and it, it, it's funny because like now, like when I work with so many athletes, like I root for the players more than the teams. Cause like, yeah. you know, like Marcus Strowman's my boy, you know, and he was in Toronto. Now he's with the Mets. So it's like, and Robbie Cano is with the Mets. So yeah. it's like, so I, I mean, I root for them and obviously I want to see all my guys win. Yeah. But, you know, then, then, you know, you know, CC when he was with New York, that was, that's my yeah. guy. So, and, mm -hmm. you know, being here, you're, I go to so many Yankee games that, I mean, you can't help but root for them. And, you know, when I was doing stuff for Mookie Betts and David Price and, Shane Victorino, I drew for Boston. So it's like I'm not a fair weather yeah. fan. I just drew for the players and people that I'm that I'm cool with. But as a white but for the White Sox, I was a massive Bo Jackson, Frank Thomas fan. Jack okay. McDowell, you know The big hurt. I see you. Big Frank Thomas is a very player. Like like we're gonna Go ahead, go ahead, grab it. Go ahead. He's being got, humble right now. We got, he has we got the Frank Thomas ball. joint. There you go. You know, I I got that Ben Baller tops card. The big hurt card. I mean, okay. make, sure, make sure to take care of him. But gotcha. yeah, Frank Thomas is my guy. I did a drawing okay. for him when I was in like, this is probably 92. So this is like junior high. I did a portrait and I went to the Yankee game to give to Frank. And, you know, everyone's trying to get him to sign baseballs. So, and I'm like, oh, I did a drawing for you. And he's like, he's like, you want me to sign? I'm like, no, nah, it's for you. He's like, oh, he was like, thank you. He goes, give me one sec. He runs in the dugout, gives me a bat and signs it. So, oh, wow. Like, That's crazy. I was like, you're the man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then another funny Frank Thomas story was I I played in, I played softball leagues and there was another guy on my team that was also a White Sox fan and I love okay. if, if you know that Frank Thomas also has a beer it's called Big Hurt Beer I heard of it okay I know you sling I know you see see the New Jacks commercials him slinging the yeah, pills yeah 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 <laughs> before that before he was doing that yeah um he he was uh at an in store at a like a a, a beer spot near where our game was and my guy was like. Yo, Frank Thomas is at this distributor. We're going. So I had a pair of original Frank Thomas sneakers, and I ran yeah. there. We we booked there, and he was there signing. And I showed up with the shoes. He's like, he's like, man. He goes, you're not messing around, you know, because I had these yeah. originals from, from yeah. like 1993, and he signed oh, wow. them and took a picture. And it's one of the few times before working with NBA players, I was like a smaller guy in the photo because that dude's yeah. a monster. Like he's big. yeah, he is a monster. He's real big, you know. But yeah, so when the oh, White so when the White Sox won the World Series in uh, in '05, being a New Yorker, I was the only guy with like White Sox vanity plates in New York. Like I couldn't drive the Yankee games because <laughs> they'd key my car, throw rocks at it. Yeah. So so everyone knew I was the only White Sox fan. They knew, so everyone was calling me like, "Your White Sox finally won," and you know whatever. So that's what's up. So hopefully with this uh with this farm team, yeah, you know, we got we got a lot of young guys. You know, Tim Anderson's a beast. I hope uh. I hope Kopech stays healthy. That dude throws like 103 miles an hour. Yeah. But he keeps getting hurt. I got hurt. some talent over there. We do. You know, I think we've sucked long enough that we've got enough talent and we've done a lot of good trading. So, yeah. you know, we get rid of Chris Sale and, you know, we got some good prospects from it. So, we'll see. fingers crossed, man. Like I said, hopefully we get a season for that too. Got you. I mean, my Red Sox, you know, we, we made some some stupid moves this offseason. You know, yes, you so did. I'm going to 
I'm a little upset with that, but um, but other than that, you know, at the end of the day, I I trust in the management, and uh, you know, we've been successful since '03. You know what I'm saying? Right. So ever since that, you know what I'm saying, I'm good with that. You know, so I'm alright with that. Uh, yeah. NBA team, who's your who's your NBA team? Again, I don't have one. However, you don't have one. just players, I, I, just players. But I was a massive Shaq fan, so wherever okay. Shaq was, that's who I rooted for. Whether it was with the with the Magic, the Lakers, the Heat. You know, whatever. The same deal. Like, you know, I'm doing stuff for Wade. I'm doing stuff for whatever. I mean, yeah. you just root for the guys. I mean, I think when you get into the finals, I generally root for the underdog just because. Um, yeah. You know, whatever. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just – it's different when you're when you're watching it and you have relations with the people. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, you definitely. know these guys. You, you want to see, you know, so-and-so win or whatever. So, you got that connection yeah. and you kind of look at the game a little differently. It's like I remember when I – one game, um, it was when uh, – God, who was it? Oh, yeah, Langston Galloway was still with the Knicks, and we went yeah. to we went to a game, and uh, Langston sent gave me tickets. But then you know Wade was my boy too, and they're playing the Heat. So I'm like, yeah. who do I root for? I'm like, whoever's paying me the most money, that's who I root for. <laughs> <laughs> but, I ain't bad at Langston's fan, man. But he um he was doing, I was doing stuff with him when he was still with the Westchester Knicks, like he before he even oh, got wow. called up. And it, we had a good relationship, and we had, you know mutual friends outside of shoes and whatever and we, we just got cool you know and then, and then his his sneaker madness bug went crazy especially when we started signing these crazy extensions yeah my man was my man was going ham on them sneakers he was going crazy man we, it was like we got the same the size so he got a lot of he got a lot of shoes for me too we oh all really the we, we all wear the same size, same size. Yeah. yeah yeah we so, all wear the same size then we good yeah i have to get over there too i might have to get in that the same, the same three pairs getting getting bounced around <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but yeah um and then and then when um things were getting a little crazy with the nfl and stuff for me and like I, my bandwidth was just kind of crazy so yeah. that's when i sent i i referred him to andrew because i was andrew. like who else yep, can yep. i kind of and then the, they've been just killing it left and right like andrew's kind of like we're like the ebony and ivory of custom shoes you know he's yeah. doing his his deal and you now i think he's a very uh i guess equally talented artist I'd say, like doing the themes okay. and like. I, I definitely I, think y'all are y'all are up there, you know, and that's just I, me on the outside looking in. I definitely like you guys working. I also like True Blue Customs his work too. Oh yeah, Billy's great. Billy's awesome. Billy, Billy. Yeah, it, he he's. He, I I might be an OG of the game, but he's like an OG in life. He's older. He's even older than me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, and then um, shit, I was gonna I was gonna say something about Andrew and Langston. I don't remember what it was. Uh, I'll think you of it. You about how they? You just talking about how they? How they? They started hitting it off and they started. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. so so what happened with um? It was at the time where he uh, Andrew was just killing themes for for Langston, and I was doing my week to week pairs for Digs. So we were yeah. overlapping themes because me and Andrew were bouncing off ideas, and you know he he's got eighty two games to pick themes. You know because yep. he was doing pair for Langston. I only had sixteen, so. My, my man is going to burn out all the themes, all the dope themes before I can get to them. So, like, yeah, you know, we're, we're, like, trying to, like, like, damn, like, you did that, but you used a different photo than I did for reference. So, we're good. We're good. Because, you yeah. know, sometimes I would – I remember, like, I did, like, the elf pair for digs, and then Andrew's like, damn it, you beat me to it because I'm working – we look what I'm working on, and he shows me his photo. Yeah. And it, you know, so it worked out. But, like I said, it, it, it's all love, even if he is a Packer fan. Now nah, that's what's up. If you could pick one player to watch from those three major sports, MLB, NFL, or the NBA, for the rest of your life, one player only from each one, who would it be? It doesn't matter if they're playing now or, or retired. Okay. Randy Moss for football. That's for I'm, obvious I'm reasons. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Um, for baseball, I would probably pick Barry Bonds. Probably. Okay. Okay. No, no matter what, no matter what he was taking, you still got to hit a round ball with a round bat. I don't care. Yeah. That dude was gifted. Even when he was in Pittsburgh and was little Barry, he was still hitting bombs. I don't care. Yeah. And for basketball, um, I'd probably, I'd probably say Iverson. Iverson is okay. one of those. I mean, okay. If we go currently, I, I mean, LeBron's a freaking animal, and he, I think he's gonna be in the league for forty-five years. He ain't going nowhere. He's a, he's like demolition man. He definitely is. He's a beast, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, he definitely is. Um, talk about the WWE now. You got into <laughs> got into yeah. customizing for for WWE. That's big time. You know, they're right down the street in Stanford. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
You know, just it, talk it about was, how that talk about how it, that came about and um some of your favorite wrestlers. Yeah, well, how it started initially was back in 2015, I'd say. I think it was okay. 2015. And I was just working on a project with um you know Josh Gothel. He used to we would die magazine and he was with Woven. He was a bald okay. white dude, glasses. But I was yeah. doing a campaign with him about something and I, and I was texting with him. We had just done a project. And, I, and he's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm watching, you know, the, the NBA playoffs, but I'm watching the WWE pay-per-view on my phone. He's like, oh, you're into wrestling. I'm like, yeah, yeah, He's like, I leak you with my man Joe. He's at WWE. He's a big sneakerhead. He goes, maybe we can, you know, maybe you guys can do something. So he linked me up with my man Joe Quinn, who actually is, he's back with the NBA. He's working with the Clippers now. Okay. And um, he was he was already a fan of what I did, so he knew who I was. So we started talking, and I was like, who can we use, you know, who can we get to do custom shoes? Cause like, I don't just want to do a pair of shoes and just give them to them and take a fight. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get some that was in the ring and whatever. Yeah. At the time, Nikki Bella was the only one wearing sneakers at that time That's true. Yep. in the ring. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, Shane McMahon wore them before and Enzo was wearing them in NXT, but like at the time she was wearing them. So he hit her up and, you know, explained who I was and whatever. And she was totally down and came to be that it was SummerSlam in New York. They were already in Connecticut. My, that was in my old studio in Connecticut. It was still close in proximity yeah. to Sanford. It was in uh, it was in in Milford, so it was close enough. Okay. And um, they ended up sending Nikki and Bree up, and they they, I did a pair of shoes for them in like a week and banged them out, and they filmed them. They had Total Divas filming in my shop. That's had, crazy. Um, th- then Complex did a feature, and they brought uh Tamara uh Tamara Dia in to do a piece on me and Nikki. So it ended up being like a big media kind of thing, which is kind of, it was cool. Like the press. It's cool, yeah. Yeah. So she wore them in, the, in SummerSlam and, you know, the kind of relationship kind of grew and she kept coming. But then um, then at SummerSlam, it was at the Barclays, um, I started getting introduced to more and more wrestlers and, you know, backstage and, you know, people started Definitely. becoming familiar that I was the shoe guy. And it was funny because like when I first started, it was mostly the girls I was, I was doing stuff for because they just yeah. were like, you know, it was like dominoes falling. Like one got one, then everybody wants to get what they got. And yeah. sneakers became more prevalent. And that's where I, I'll credit Enzo Amore. You know, he was wearing the custom Jordans in, in the ring and, you know, and, and kind of showing that they could actually wrestle in them, you know, besides, yeah. you know, whatever. So he was getting stuff, you know, and then Champ sponsored him and he was doing the sneaker watch every, every Monday Night Raw. But the problem was he had to wear what Chance was giving him for the new release every single week. So he wasn't wearing custom shoes because he had to show off yeah. the new product. So yeah. I would just, so we would save the customs for pay per views, and then he would them for like money in the bank or whatever, and then uh, then it just grew, you know, it just uh, meeting more people and talking, and you know, I could go down the list of of people that I've done stuff for, and yeah. it's wild. I mean, you figure go through through the, through the talent. I'll, I'll start with the girls. You got you got Nikki, you got Becky Lynch, you got Sasha Banks, um, you got Natalia, you got. Uh, Naomi, I'm trying mm-hmm. to think of all the ones that they worn stuff. Um, Did you do anything with Carmella? Yo, Carmella, oh, Money in the Bank. She's she's gonna okay. wearing a pair for this one. Okay, on Sunday. okay, okay. Um, I'll then, be watching um, for that. Yeah, and then uh, Zelina Vega, she's she's um become a from she's she's from Queens and she's kind of she she's awesome. She's been a, become a big supporter of what we're doing. Um, yeah, Mrs. Mashi, I did I did a pair of boots for Paige. Um, then into into the guys, Kofi Kingston. Obviously, I he, yeah, he's, he's been wearing all the crazy stuff, and he's been a great supporter too, man. Like I remember Wale connected us initially because you okay. know, I've been I've been friends with Wale forever. He was a, he was a customer and then became a friend, and he's obviously into wrestling too. And you know, Westside yeah. Gun and all these other guys are into it. And Wale wanted to do shoes for the new day, so I did I did a pair. I didn't do Kofi's pair initially. I did Big E's pair and I did Xavier Woods pair, and okay. uh, Dank. Dank did Kofi's pair. Okay. Uh, Dank Customs. Yep. And Kofi hit me up and just thanked me. And I was, you know, I was like, oh, no, you know, no problem, dude. But I was like, I didn't do your pair. I did the other two. He's like, oh, oh okay. So then he hit, you know, then we just started talking and becoming friends. And I right. just became the go-to, you know, whenever he had like a last minute request, the fact that I was, you know, I'm going to do whatever to make it happen. I ended, I've yeah. been fortunate enough to work with so many bigger companies that, you know, timelines are very, I need it tomorrow. So I've been used to that. Yeah, you know, and you know, and and luckily, WWE's been very, very um, gracious, and you know, definitely made it worth worth my while, as opposed to the wrestlers and and the people. So yeah, 
um yeah and then, and then the relationships with all these other people like becky's been great you know and yeah she she always rocking my stuff on raw and whatever um yeah Rick morgan we're doing i did stuff for um god and shane, shane mcmahon obviously i did so many pairs of his yeah um you know he was hitting me up every, for i remember did jordan ones i did 33s you know for whatever pay-per-view it was he hit me up and i remember i remember a story uh, when we first started talking um he, i was i was playing basketball outside i was like i'm like playing like you know full court five on five whatever like pickup <laughs> yeah. games and he yeah. calls me and i'm like i'm like oh shit i was like he must have be pocket dialing me there's no way he's calling yeah. me right now so i let it go to voice and they called again i'm like okay well uh yeah so i answered the phone he's like hey sorry to bother you i'm like bro you can bother me wherever you want You're sorry to man. bother me <laughs> nah, yeah me? exactly yeah so Come he on, um man. he ended up uh wanting shoes and whatever and it was just it was cool and it and at any time he needs something i made sure to take care of him and you know sit, you know i wash his back he washed mine you know the wrestlemania i'm good you know or whatever yeah it's mrs much then yeah john cena would did shoes for john us, cena you, know? you got you gotta throw yeah. that massachusetts in there you know what i'm saying of course you know it's <laughs> funny um my man my man played uh football against john cena in college when cena went to oh, okay the, i forgot what college he went to but my boy went to Cortland, and they played against them that's so, crazy. That's small crazy. world. That, I, was small wa- world. I, was wa- I was just watching hi- uh, Brock Lesnar highlights before because the uh, NFL posted something about it. And when he was with the Vikings for like a hot second for a couple yeah, of Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Too funny. So, yeah, yeah, and actually, um, um, SummerSlam's in Boston this year. So hopefully it works out. And they, and they I'm trying to make it happen. It. I'm trying well, to I'll get tell this. You what, if, if, that, if it does happen, we'll, we'll talk and we'll, we'll, I'll get you in there. Okay. That's that. Hey, that I've always helped again the building. I'm sure, but yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're just as connected as I am at the garden, <laughs> or whatever it is now. I appreciate that. What I used to do when I was in Boston was I used to do the seat fillers. So oh. that's what I used, that's what I used to do to get in the building. Bro, I got I got a story for you about a seat filler. So I was um that NXT had um had one of the pay per views at Bridgeport because something happened in Long Island last year, like that uh-huh. they couldn't do it. I, for, I forgot what it was. And um, they they put us second row, you know, totally. I'm good. And okay. they had um, Stephanie McMahon and the kids sitting in front of us. And then um, when the uh, when the Street Profits won the the title, it was like their whole family was sitting by us, and Bianca Belair's yeah. family was by them. So yeah. they all went backstage after they won the title. So there was all blank seats. So they ended up bringing in seat fillers from you know from like the nosebleeds to come in yeah. and sit. And so they brought this one dude who's like the soup. You could tell he's like a super fan. Like he only leaves his house for wrestling events. Yeah, kind of yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Saw they put him near Stephanie, and you could see like him like freaking out. Like he didn't oh, know what wow. to do. And, and like and like me and my boy are like, we were catching what's going on. We're like, oh, this is gonna be bad. This is gonna be so bad. And you see him like trying to inch and inch. I'm like, don't do it, dude. Don't do it. Oh man. And then and then and thank God he got too scared, but. You could tell, like, every match he was getting closer and closer to try and, like, oh, get man. a photo. I was like, don't do it, dude. Don't you don't risk Triple it. H in the background, like, just coming right behind him. This- I'm <laughs> saying. I finally, I finally got to meet Triple H at, uh, at SummerSlam in Toronto. I, you know, I've worked with so many people. I never met Triple H. Oh, I did. Oh, wow. So I did stuff for Undertaker. I forgot about that. And Ronda Rousey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You got oh, some heavy hitters. Bro, there's so, there's so many. But, like, it's hard when you get put on the spot to try and think of them all. I got you. Who's your favorite wrestler of all time? Stone Cold all day. Okay, Stone Cold. All day. I mean, it's Stone Cold, and I'd say Rock number two. And then I mean, I'm just I'm thinking more personalities more than anything. I mean, I'm, yeah, everyone likes Ric Flair. Ric Flair is probably still one of the most relevant people. Of course, wrestling. of course. So, oh, and he's from Charlotte too. <laughs> I think about that. There too. you go. See, yeah, look at that. My, yeah, I, was supposed see, to, I was actually supposed to do shoes for Rick, and then and then it was going to be Air Force Ones, but then he he got that little Adidas endorsement, so we, we yeah. switched it up. So. Is what it is. We'll, we'll get we'll get it done. If I gotta go through Quavo or somebody, we'll 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 do it. <laughs> My favorite wrestler of all time is Sting. Sting's great. I, I, it's a bummer that he got hurt. I, Sting's I, my guy. They were they were they were hinting that he was gonna try and come back again. We'll we'll see. If they if they get Sting and Taker for WrestleMania next Bro. year, I don't give a damn. We gotta be in there. Even if it's got even if it's like CGI and they have like a Tupac hologram having them wrestle, I don't care. Yeah. It. I gotta I be in the building. I don't care yeah. where it's at. I gotta be in the building to see my guy sting. Hell yeah! Because now, 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 are you are you surfer sting or? 
I'm all the way. Surfer, oh, Crow, okay. NWO, Wolfpack. I'm gotcha. I'm all the way with him. It don't I matter. It. I respect you know it. Man? I've been there yeah. the whole way. I love it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sting was one of those guys that meant a lot to me. His match against Ravishing Rick Rude at Class of the Champions, the one when um with St um Lex Luger and them injured his knee right yep. before the match, and he had the U.S. Championship. When he came back in that ambulance, that's my match right there. He lost the match, but it's just the fact he came back in. Storytelling, man. Stories. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what carries those things. You can do all the flippy stuff all you want, but if you can't tell a story, you're just watching yeah. a bunch of guys play a fight. And they're great at telling stories. It's awesome. Definitely. What was, when was the first time you, you saw some of your work on, on TV? And, and what did you say when you saw it? You know like, what? I was, just I, was, that moment with. I was trying to think about it. I think the first pair I saw on TV that, like, got shine. Yeah. Or, like, at all. Um, it had to be Wade's. Wade's with the lead names were probably the first ones where, like, I saw him on TV. Okay. But, but like, like I said, like, back then it was, like, I'm trying to think. God. Oh, no, no, no. I, I did a pair of shoes for Joe Budden that were on 106 and Park. Oh, wow. <laughs> before, okay. Before that. that I'm I just, to remember, check that out then. Remember the um, remember the LeBron Boutons I did? They were like the LeBron Tens, and they had the spikes of LeBron, yeah. like like the, the lubes. I did a pair of them for him, and he won on one of six in Park, and he brought me there, and I was I was like, you know, in the green room and whatever. Okay. That that, that was when Joe was still rapping and not doing podcasts. Yeah. I got you. Okay. All right. That makes sense then, because I always Joe wanted to know that. He bought my damn paranormal foams, and I regret it to this day. <sighs> Shouldn't have done that. Nah, but biggest, you know, biggest. What? It, 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 it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. It does. Dude, too many times, though. <laughs> too many regretful. DJ Ski still has my Barcelona uh, mango Kobe 6s. Kobe. He won't, oh, man. He, he won't give them back. Dude. I'm going to go to LA get, and get them. I ended up getting those, and I ended up flipping them in the, in the wrong moment. You know what I'm saying? It was just one of those situations where I was like, man, I'm going to flip this to get something else. And then now I'm still trying to get them back, and I shouldn't have done that the same. I shouldn't have done it. I went you after the Qua, the the Qua 54 fives, and then mm -hmm. I went after um it was that in the Air Mag, but okay. I still like that Kobe Mango. If I can get that back, I'll definitely get it Bro, back. Bro, and the thing is, a size twelve, size twelve is tough to get. Well, I know there's one in LA in DJ Ski's closet. Oh boy, <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go get that. We're gonna have to get it. We probably shouldn't uh, be saying this out in public. There's uh some people that can see definitely. us. Yeah. Biggest um biggest accomplishment in your career. We about to wind up. I think Instagram. Yeah, it's telling me we got two minutes left. But biggest oh, damn. accomplishment. Um, my biggest accomplishment is probably going to be June twenty fourth of this year, and I can't tell you what it is yet. Okay. All I'm going to say is it's it's going to be it's something you won't expect from me, but it's it's okay. going to be dope, and I, I think we're going to make some waves. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a cliffhanger. No, no, you good. June twenty fourth. I'm gonna be ready for it. And yep. um, what's something that you would tell the the old Dan, the twenty five year old Dan, um, that you experience now, and, and just the wisdom? What would you tell him? Don't care about what people think. I think I, for the longest time, I was doing so much to try and fit in and try to be in the cool kids club that I just kind of, kind of got got wrapped up in trying to please people that I should be pleasing myself. Okay. And I think once I, I, I started taking more risks and realizing that it didn't matter what people thought. I mean, it matters what people think because obviously we got to keep the lights on. <laughs> but yeah. to a point where people respect it, like I think, I think for every graduation album, you got to put out an AOA to Heartbreak. And Definitely. I think people got to respect the whole catalog and know that we're taking risks. I think if, you know, you see a new Jordan model come out, you know, no one, not, no one ever just says, oh, that's so dope. Usually happens yeah. like, oh, that's whack or whatever. And it's because they're taking risks and people don't, they, they automatically – hate on what they don't understand or what they don't get. It's a, something yeah. new. It's, it, you push back. And then you usually see when it's released, they, oh, they're kind of growing on me because yeah. you get a little more familiar with it. And, and I think That's that goes true. with art, too. I think the people have to understand that with custom shoes, you can divide. It's We're not all in one category. There's artists. There's the shoe surgeon, cobblers. They're building shoes. You got there's 15 seconds. World. 15 seconds. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, hey, I just want to say thank you for the time, man. I appreciate you, bro. And we're going to talk off. We'll talk off IG. Definitely. Sounds good. Appreciate you guys.